Supreme Court Dan Olasi said, I don't believe that almost 20 to 30 cents both for Peter Obi and Atiku are foolish. Can you imagine? So what are you trying to say? All these are PDP people uh, that are, you know, part of the people that are putting Nigeria where it is today. So when they say they are not foolish, what are you trying to say? That they all know what they did when they gave the presidency to who? To Tinubu or what? I need to understand. Let's dive into the details first of all to see what Dan Lassie is trying to say. A significant PDP official, Chief Dan Olasi, has responded to the Supreme Court decision confirming President Tinubu's win. He stated that he taught the several uh, senior advocates of Nigeria who were standing in for Peter Obi and Atiku Abubakar, roughly 20 to 30 in total, were not unprofessional. Exactly. Okay. He saw that these attorneys are quite smart and knowledgeable about the legal issues they were arguing in court. Now, in an interview with AIT, Olasi mentioned that the Supreme Court did not find any of the issues to be substantiated. He recommended that the court refrain from declaring the issues as unproven and instead let them stand as unproven. He acknowledged the court's decision and referred to them as infallible because they are the highest court in the country. Now, part of his words, I don't believe that almost 20 to 30 senior advocates both for Peter Obi and Atik Abubakar are foolish. I don't think we have we have whoever it is that brilliant that will look at a senior advocate Uche and say that he didn't know what he was doing or Michael Zekume. These are very brilliant lawyers and they are contesting for something because if you look at the way the judgment was being given okay they left the main issues only making case uh, kissing remarks that uh, this was not proven that is it so so what Donald is trying to say here is that the 20 to 30 son that represented pdp and the Labour party at back and peter obi in court are not foolish they're intelligent people they're smart people the Supreme Court and the Tribunal actually did not have any case to defend. They didn't have any, they didn't know what to do. They just declared that the evidences or the cases they, they, they submitted were unproven and lacks merit. Eh? Because they don't have, they didn't have anything to say. They were, they, they, they must have collected money and they were hell bent on sustaining the victory of their paymaster. That is it. So I think what Dan Olas is trying to say here, is that those, uh, even though they have, uh, you know, agreed because the Supreme Court is the highest court in land, that doesn't mean that the justice has been served. Justice was not served both at the tribunal and at the Supreme Court. That is the truth. It's an unfortunate situation that Nigeria has found itself within the judiciary because the executive and the legislators have kept the judiciary disenfranchised completely so that they can continue to influence them with bribery and corruption. That is it. That they cannot flesh them with with money, and that is why a, a judge that cannot build a house at retirement, you come and give him five hundred million as a bribe. He will collect it and sell his conscience. He will be, he will become foolish automatically. All he has studied in school, he will just throw it away because all he has worked for for over thirty five years as a judge or as a justice, somebody politician will just steal money and come and pay him overnight. Eh? What he's getting overnight is more than even his retirement benefit. Why won't he collect it? Because the system is 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 uh, is uneven. It's been set up to fail. That is why all of this are happening. It's an unfortunate situation, I must say. People are reacting here to what Dan Olasi has just said. Somebody said, with serious money, any son can be stupid and foolish, sir. That is it. They have been disenfranchised by the system. So any serious money they see, they set their conscience, they close their eyes, they throw away their wig. That is it. Uh, somebody said, I wonder why Pa Dan Olasi did not know that. Or is he leaving that possibility out? Anyways, most politicians are never honest. Why some of them are half honest? <laughs> Sao Lassi, they are not foolish, <coughs> but ignorant and not diligent. How can a son not know? That election matters are sui generis. How could sans not know 
that you have to attach and plead election result gotten from the polling unit by a petitioner's agent to your petition. How could SANS know, not know, that extra evidence are not acceptable as a matter of fact and law by the appeal court? So many things that made the SANS very ignorant and you know, lethargic, lethargic in conducting election matters. For me, the petition by Peter Obi and Atika Bubaka were largely lost by the by his lawyers, in com, by his lawyers' incompetence, or by their lawyers' incompetence. So when you face a colossus and doyen of election cases <coughs> like Chief Wole Olani, Wole Olani Pekun, you must have to be at your very best. They made the man to rubbish them. Rather, what Peter Obi mostly relied on was fake assurances from the social media. Who told you? Eh? You have said your own anyway. So I believe there was a country. So even if you were hired by Peter B and Atiku, the same judgment would have been delivered. Nigeria is now a company and not a country. The next president after Tinubu is now warming up for his turn. Exactly. It's really a company and not a country. Neither were the sons of INEC and APC and Tinubu dollars. Add to them the full complements of the judiciary at the trial and the supreme court levels the truth these bitter losers always fail to realize is that no matter how strong your argument is one has to be a winner and the other has to be a loser that has been the nature of litigation from time the concept was developed can you imagine as always say we are wrong dan lawyers will continue to defend their client even if the clients confess that they actually committed the offense. Is there any any bad case as far as the Nigerian lawyers are concerned? Almost all the appellant lawyers, con uh, including Shun Okimbaloye, were dozing when the judgment of the presidential election tribunal verdict was being read in the court. Eh? What that meant was that they knew that superior arguments rooted in the vestiges, uh, vestiges of the law and empirical evidences we have been dished out to subdue their shallow argument based on personal sentiment and emotions. Oh, wow, that is your own. Because if you ask me, I would say Atiku and Obi's lawyers were clearly motivated by money. Simple. Hmm. So I say the brilliance of lawyers is only as good as his case. These sons were just onto theatrics. Okay. They left a lot of cogent points they were irrelevant, that were relevant to their initial case of being rigged out and started especially at Tiku chasing shadows. The same can be said of Peter Obi, who was arguing that Abuja is superior to the rest of Nigeria. But that is the constitution now. These people just overturned the constitution straight up. There's just, there's just nothing special that they did. They just overturned the constitution. Let's be frank. It's okay. So Dan Olasi has said his own um, that the judgment has been passed and that is Nigeria for you. So be it. So thank you for listening and let's have your comments.